Hello, GCS choir students. I wish I could be there with you right now, but by the time you're watching this, hopefully I have had my baby. <laughs> I'm not there yet, but so soon. Um, I wanted to share with you an opportunity about our choir trip to New York City on March 18th to 21st. For those of you that have already signed up, I wanted to give you some more updates. And for those of you that haven't signed up, I wanted to extend the opportunity to you. So this year we'll be traveling to New York City, as you probably have heard. Um, here's a couple of the highlights of the trip that we'll get to do, and we're heading to New York. So about the trip, it's four days um, in the city, three nights in a midtown Manhattan hotel. It's really too much fun to miss because you'll get to go with your friends. Um, we'll also get to see one Broadway show as a group. And we'll have one unforgettable, very unique performance at one of the most famous concert halls in America. So you probably know the name of the hall now for those of you that have signed up for the trip, but this is what the inside of Carnegie Hall looks like. And it is an incredible space. It's known as one of the most prestigious concert stages in the United States, according to the New York Times. Um, almost all of the leading classical music and more recently popular musicians have performed, have performed there starting in 1891. So here's just a few of those performers that I thought you might recognize. As you'll see, there's all different kinds of genres represented at Carnegie Hall. Um, and not only musicians, but comedian Bill Cosby performed there with B.B. King. Um, so they've just got a wide variety. Even Jay-Z has performed at Carnegie Hall. <laughs> so you'll be among the greats. Um, there's this rumor about Carnegie Hall. It's kind of been a joke in the music community I wanted to share with you. So a famous violinist was asked on the street by some tourist in New York, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? And rather than giving him directions, he just told him practice, practice, practice. <laughs> and so that joke has kind of stuck because you don't really just perform at Carnegie Hall because you want to, you perform there because you get invited to. So if you were in, if you decided you wanted to go with us, you this is what we'd be doing. We'd be performing in this massive choir um, with other musicians from around the world. Um, high school musicians as well as college musicians are invited. So imagine your picture there and then imagine her picture right there. Um, this is Dr. Amanda Quist. Um, I know her personally. I've been able to work with her in a few different venues, and she is incredible. She taught at Westminster Choir College, which is in Princeton, New Jersey. Um, it's one of the leading choir schools in America. Um, and she taught there <laughs> because she's that good. Um, she teaches elsewhere now because she once you teach there, you can teach anywhere and do whatever you want. But she would be our head director. Um, we'd be learning from her, working with her, and she's just incredible. I'm excited that we'll have the opportunity for you to get to know her. So here's kind of what the outline of the trip would look like day by day. On Saturday, the 18th of March, we would leave um, BWI, the Amtrak train station to get to New York City. Um, we'd leave sometime in the morning. I just picked around 730 because that's when I saw <laughs> a reasonably priced um, ticket. We'd arrive in New York City sometime in the late morning or very early afternoon. We'd drop off our bags in our hotel. We'd go get lunch somewhere in New York City, you and your group, your travel group. Um, we'd either have a rehearsal with Dr. Quist in the afternoon or in the evening. When we're not rehearsing with her, that's when we get to do sightseeing. And I will say when we show up for that rehearsal, we will already know all the notes, all the rhythms, how to sing everything. She's really just fine tuning things while we're there. Um, so we'll get some sightseeing. Here are some of the sightseeing opportunities included in the cost of our trip. This is Broadway. We get to see a Broadway show. Um, we'll get a group ticket to it and we get to pick the Broadway show. We send in our three top choices and then the company gets us tickets to one of those. So I think I'll let you guys decide. You can do like a bracket type thing of what show we should put, we should see. <laughs> we have to keep it school appropriate. So keep that in mind. That might limit some of our options, but Broadway show on Broadway is incredible. We'll also get to check out the Top of the Rock observation deck. Um, this gives you a 360 degree view of New York City that not many people get to see unless they're up on the top of Rockefeller Center. It's top of the rock. So um, if you've seen 30 Rock, that comedy takes place 
at Rockefeller Center. If you've seen Home Alone, Kevin Malone is, and he goes to the Rockefeller ice skating rink. So the building is right behind it. It's an iconic um, building that we'll get to explore if you go on this trip with us. Then on Sunday, we have either a morning or afternoon rehearsal that let us know closer to the date. <laughs> but when we're not in rehearsal, we get to do sightseeing. There's a ton of free stuff within five to 10 minutes walking distance of our hotel. Um, one of those free things is Central Park, Times Square. Um, you can walk around Broadway again. Um, Statue of Liberty would require taking the subway, <laughs> but that is an option as well if you decide to do that with your group and so much more. Museums, shops, it's really up to you and your group. So that would be Sunday. And then on Monday is our actual concert day. So it's more focused on the music. We'd have a rehearsal probably in the morning. <laughs> Um, and then there would be a sound check. We'd walk over to Carnegie Hall. It'd probably be, you'd have lunch and then we'd go over to Carnegie Hall. We'd do our sound check in that venue. This is what Carnegie Hall looks like from the inside on their main stage where we would be performing. Um, and then we'd have our concert at Carnegie Hall. On that Monday, your parents would be welcome to attend, even if they're not coming to New York as chaperones, if they just wanted to come up for the evening to see you perform at Carnegie Hall. They could do that. We'll get tickets. Those go on sale about a month or two prior to the concert, and they range from $40 a ticket to $100 a ticket. So um, that's something to be on the lookout for. <laughs> um, and then after that, included in our price is a post-concert buffet reception. So that's just a time for us to relax, hang out, um, enjoy a great concert. So then the last day of our trip, Tuesday, the 21st, we would be leaving New York. I imagine we'd leave in the early afternoon or the late morning. We'd get on our Amtrak and head back to BWI. Um, so it is important to note you will miss two days of school at GCS. Um, if you decide to attend this trip, it'd be Monday right after spring break is done and Tuesday as well. Um, I think your teachers will understand how cool and unique this opportunity is. And if not, I will make sure to work with them um, as they as you start catching up on your work um, from getting back and missing those two days of spring break. But I think this opportunity is just way too cool to pass up. Um, if you're worried about missing school, I will gladly talk to your teachers about it before. <laughs> so I would anticipate not being at school on this Tuesday as we travel back. So you're probably wondering, what is this going to cost? Um, and let me fill you in. It's all based on how many people are in your hotel room is what the company does. So if you and three friends or three family members decide to room together, it's $1,189 for you. Um, that's the quad occupancy. If the triple, that's you and two friends, um, it's $1,279. And as you can see, it goes on from there, the double and the single. If your parents decide to attend or siblings decide to attend as non-performers, they just want to come along for the ride and do all the stuff with us, except not sing at Carnegie Hall. This is their rate. Um, if they decide to stay in a room with three other people, that's the quad occupancy at $739. Triple double, you can see those prices get higher um, the less people that you room with. So here's what is included in that price. I'm going to go off the $1,189 for the quad occupancy performer rate. So in that price is the venue, stay, getting to perform and rehearse in Carnegie Hall, all the staff that's required to um, man that place, working with Dr. Quist, paying for her to be there, paying for a professional accompanist, professional musicians, um, that's part of the price. All of the music, the performance recording, you'll get a recording of the concert, as well as any tracks that we use to learn the music um, before the concert. Uh, those are included. The buffet following the concert on Monday evening. It also includes three nights stay in a Midtown Manhattan hotel. There's two of them that we could possibly be staying in. Um, it includes transportation. We get two one-way subway or bus tickets. So um, we could use that when we first get into New York, taking um, the from the train station to our hotel might require a subway. So that is, would use one one-way subway ticket. Um, we get two of those. Uh, we also, it includes a group ticket to Broadway, the show of our choice. Um, and it includes the top of the rock observation deck. That's the 360 degree view of New York City. Um, like similar to like if you went up in the Empire State Building before, another great view. 
So here's what's not included in that price that I just want you to keep in the back of your mind. Um, this is money that's not due to the company. It's just to keep in the back of your mind of what the actual cost would be. So getting to and from New York City, I have us taking the Amtrak. It's about $75 one way, multiplied by two plus the insurance cost. Um, it's about $160. Um, for many people that attend this festival and are invited to sing at Carnegie Hall, they have to purchase airfare. So I think we're getting off pretty easy here because we live so close to New York, which I'm incredibly grateful for. <laughs> um, I also wanted to quote you what meals might cost. You can keep in mind how much you might spend on eating, but breakfast you can get for about $10 in New York if you're content with a bagel and cream cheese or you know something light like that. You can get it for about $10 times three breakfasts, that's $30. Lunches are about $15, give or take. So there's 60, 15 times four is $60. And then we'll have three dinners in New York City. Imagining that would be about $25 per dinner times three is 75. So when you add all that up, it's about $165 for food that we'd be spending in New York City. And then it's also considering extra subway rides that you might be taking. Those are $2.75 one way. So if you decided to go to the Statue of Liberty, it there and back would be about $5.50. As you'll notice what I calculated on extra entertainment, a lot is free to do in New York City if you like to wander around, like, for example, in Central Park or Times Square. However, in Central Park, if you wanted to check out the zoo, which I would recommend, it's $19.95 for one ticket there. Um, and like we mentioned, getting to and from the Statue of Liberty on the subway is $5.50. Plus, actually checking out the Statue of Liberty, getting on um, that island is $31. So just something to keep in mind if you and your group members um, decide that you really wanted to check out the Statue of Liberty in one of our afternoons off from rehearsal, that would be about what would you would spend. And then I did quote $50 for souvenirs. If you're one that isn't really sentimental about those kind of things, then you might not need to think about that in your calculation. But when you add up all of those things, transportation, meals, um, and extra entertainment and souvenirs, it comes to $425 as my estimate. So we have that 425 plus, if you're staying in a quad occupancy room, the 1,189. So it brings your total to 1614 for performers, 1,100 or so for the non-performers. However, we did qualify for a $100 discount because for those students that signed up by June 30th, we get $100 off the final price of the trip. So for performers, that brings the total actually down to $1,514. Um, it doesn't bring the total down for non-performers, but I think it is important to mention, if you're one of the students that's new to choir and you would like to sign up for this trip, the company has decided to honor that and you will also get $100 off the price of your trip if you sign up by the 20th of September. So um, he, I'm just thrilled that they're, they're continuing to offer that discount because we secured it early in June. You can thank your friends for doing that. <laughs> so I did want to bring up, many of you have been to New York City before. You live so close. You've probably gone as a family or with friends. But what makes this trip different to New York City than one that you could take with your family? I think the biggest thing that sets it apart is being at Carnegie Hall. You've earned the spot to perform there. I sent in multiple videos of us singing and performance recordings, and they accepted one of them. They accepted one of our last ones. So you've earned the spot. You don't just get to sing there because you want to. You have to earn the spot, and that's a big deal, especially in the music community. So um, that is something that really sets this apart and makes it a unique trip to New York City. You'll be performing with professional musicians. It's great to sing at GCS with our friends, um, but this elevates you to that next level. Another thing is you just get to travel with your friends. It's one thing to travel with your family, but I feel like when you're traveling with your friends, you get to be a little bit more independent, a little more responsible for your stuff, your belongings, your money. Um, it just really makes you feel like more of an adult, I would say. Um, not only that, but you get to make some really great memories traveling. Um, those are some of my sweetest memories of choir is on different trips um, with friends, just the funny things and exchanges that happen there. 
And that's what you remember 10 years from now when you're thinking back on your time at GCS. So I'm glad we can provide that opportunity to you. So here's how the breakdown of payments works. Many of you have already done the June 30th $100 deposit. We took we added that onto your GCS student account. So you didn't need to send in a check or a credit card. And that'll remain so for the September 20th payment. I believe that's a Tuesday. What it will do is we'll charge that to your GCS student account. So you'll see an extra $500 charge on there. But you don't need to write me a check or bring in a credit card or anything like that. It's all taken care of from our business office. The business office at GCS will write one large check, not like physically large, but <laughs> one large group check. Um, if you're someone that is new to choir and you've decided, hey, I think I really want to do this, you can still um, join us. What you'll do instead is you will pay the $500 deposit that's due or $500 <laughs> performer fee that's due on the September 20th. And you'll pay the $100 deposit that would have been due on June 30th. So yours is a total of $600 deposit. You'll need to let me know that that's what you're interested in doing. But that's the biggest payment you'll make, <laughs> it sounds like, for the rest of the trip. Um, so then, as you'll notice, um, the next payment is due November 20th, and it's less. It's only $400. So by November 20th, you will have paid a total of $1,000. The 100 deposit, 500 and 400 So $1,000. By January 20th, the remainder is due. If you're in that quad occupancy room, the rate is $1,189 minus a $100 discount. So it's $1,089. So $89 would be due on January 20th if you follow me. So that's your smallest payment. And it just goes up from there if you're in a triple and so on. So you'll notice that in December, there's no payment due. They did that intentionally um, because that can be a pretty expensive month with all the holidays <laughs> and gift giving that usually accompanies December. So they have considered that and your smallest payment is due in January. The whole trip will be paid for by January 20th. Um, which I think is great. So you can, and we'll, we'll do that payment the same way where we charge it to your GCS student account. Um, more fundraising ideas about that later. Um, here's the refund cancellation policy. If you've signed up for the trip and you've decided, I don't wanna go to New York City anymore. I don't wanna have that kind of choir opportunity. I'm not into it. Um, you need to let me know before the 20th um, so we can get your refund of a $100 deposit back. Um, you won't get that refund until after the whole trip has been paid for by the choir. So you can expect that in January. Um, but if you don't let me know by the 20th, you can see from this table how um, the penalty for not letting me know. So be proactive about that with your families. Um, I did want to speak to a little bit about fundraising. I have drafted a donation letter um, that you can send to close friends and family. And it's just a way to reach out to them, let them know what you're doing at GCS and what you're raising money for. Um, I've made it so you can personalize it to each person you send it to. I think this is a fantastic fundraiser because it costs like the price of a stamp, 60 cents, to send a letter to someone, um, grandma, grandpa, friend, family. And, you know, the worst thing that can happen is they don't send you money. <laughs> but most people, yeah. You know, in my experience have sent like some sort of check um, to help raise money for their, um, their trips. So it's a great opportunity because it actually doesn't cost you very much money and it's very minimal work. And while you're, while it's the summer, the very beginning of the year, you probably have time to actually craft those letters and send them. Um, and it's your family loves to hear from you and your close family friends. So um, those have been sent to your emails as of like July 27th. So you can go back and check that out. Um, I did want to also speak to COVID. I know that we're still living in a time where COVID is a present danger. Um, I just felt that with the way that COVID is trending, it was okay to go ahead and try planning this trip. If you're one that's a little bit nervous, there is travel insurance that I'd be happy to share with you, um, but it requires that you actually test positive for COVID um, in order to get some of your money back on the trip. Um, but I just feel like it can be dangerous just to go to school and live your life, um, not only travel. So I um, didn't want that to stop us from providing you this really incredible and unique opportunity 
to sing at Carnegie Hall and really elevate yourself, um, push yourself to that next level. So I look forward to hearing from you. Um, I'll be checking my email periodically um, by the time school starts. <laughs> so um, you can expect me to get back to your emails with questions within 24, I would say 48 to 48 hours. But please let me know if you're interested in attending if you haven't signed up yet or what questions might come up. You can be thinking about who you might want to be rooming with. Um, they don't have to be your best friends <laughs> that you're rooming with. All it is is you're sleeping in that room with them. Um, so we'll have travel groups that go around the city, you know, with different groups of people. We'll have chaperones. It'll be a, it'll be a good, awesome opportunity for you. And I look forward to um, answering any of your other questions that come up. Can't wait to see you guys. Thank <laughs> you.